Hi everybody. Today we're going to explore how a consensus algorithm works in an open network. I'll be using Parsec, an ABFT consensus algorithm, to show you how a network that lets nodes join and leave at will can still reach agreement about what's going on. I'll explain what this means in practice, run some code, and show what's happening. And hopefully it'll help you to then go off and use that code in any permissionless project that you're involved with. So let's kick off. Imagine you've set up a bunch of nodes in a network. Each node is listening for events that are taking place across the network, but there's no way of guaranteeing in which order those messages will appear. So each node uses Parsec to get all of these events into an order that the rest of the network will eventually agree with. As they follow this process, information is shared so that everybody else gradually builds up the same knowledge. But how does it happen? Well, by each node continuously agreeing on who has a valid right to vote on the order of events. Let's start by discussing what happens when a node leaves the network. This might happen for a number of reasons, such as a node losing its connection to the other members, or perhaps a node is voted out by the other nodes because it's being malicious. To keep things simple, let's consider lack of connectivity and malicious activity in the same way. When a node notices that there's a problem with a peer, it votes to highlight this problem. That's to say, it records information about the lack of connectivity, for example, and shares it with other nodes in the expectation of reaching consensus about the information. If the nodes then reach consensus, they all remove the node in question from the list of nodes involved in the decision process. It's different, of course, for the node that leaves, because for a node that's lost connectivity, well, nothing else happens, simply because it can't receive network messages anymore. If, on the other hand, a node is seen to be malicious, or the node has perhaps partial, but not total, loss of connection, then that issue might be significant enough to trigger a supermajority of nodes to vote for it to be removed. So it might see the network vote to remove it, at that stage, it has no option but to disconnect from the network entirely. Because even if it chose to hang around, no honest node in the network would ever communicate with it, and nor will they accept messages from it. Now, when a node joins, things are a little more complicated. First up, the members have to find out that there's a new node that actually wants to join. And once a node following the Parsec protocol finds out that there's a new node waiting to join, they're required to vote in order to add the node. And once there are enough votes by the nodes and consensus is eventually reached, then each node will add that new node to its peer list. The new node's now a member of the network and it can be contacted by the other nodes and others can accept the messages that it sends. But how does that work from the point of view of the node that actually wants to join? Well, First of all, it starts by contacting the other members. And it does this by receiving a list of the current members and marking them as valid voters. In other words, nodes that can vote for events and whose votes are recorded in the gossip graph and counted. It will also mark these current members as valid senders of messages. In other words, nodes from which it can accept gossip messages. After making contact, the joining node waits if the nodes all vote and reach consensus so that the node can join, then existing nodes will send initial gossip to the joining node, which contains the whole gossip graph up until that point in time. And this is a crucial part of the process, because the newcomer can now trace the history of consensus on the network from its genesis until the present day. And by replaying every single membership change that's taken place so far since the start of time, it arrives at the correct list of current members. At that point, the very last event on the record will be the addition of the new node to the network. Now the new node is marked as a valid voter and it has become a full member. So that's the principle. Now let's see it in action. If you want to get your hands dirty with the code itself, you can download the Parsec code from GitHub. You can run an example that shows how each of the rounds of gossip is generated and how different nodes then take this information 
to arrive at the same sequence of stable blocks, at the same time as nodes are being added and removed. So to do this, you just need to have a working Rust development environment set up with the latest stable version of the Rust compiler. You can then run the basic example from the directory of the Parsec code. First off, we need to use the Rust package manager cargo and issue command cargo run example basic. Our example is named basic. We also need to enable some features. For this example, we are using mock as this replicates mock values for nodes ID instead of actual cryptographic values. Adding dump graphs allows the example to place corresponding graphs into a folder. And we'll take a look at those later. But if you want to use this feature, you'll also need to have GraphViz installed. Then we tell the example to add or remove peers during the example, as well as specifying the number of opaque events. And opaque events are payloads which are unreadable to Parsec. In this example, we'll add one peer, we'll remove none, and we'll have one opaque event. As you can see, this can run and achieve consensus in 14 rounds. This shows nodes gossiping and separating them into rounds. But just to be clear, these rounds are shown purely for visualization. They don't occur in the live network. If we go back to round 12, we can see the order in which nodes voted. Alice voted to add Eric, followed by the opaque payload. Bob, on the other hand, did the opposite with Carol. And Dave and Eric voted the same as Alice. So what do we mean by stable blocks? Well, these are blocks of gossip that the nodes consider to have reached consensus. This also includes the Genesis block, which is not included in the votes. In round 12, the nodes have reached consensus on the Genesis block, as well as add Eric. And as you can see, Eric has now been added and is a full voting member. Some nodes then see consensus on the opaque payload from round 13, with Carol and Dave finally reaching consensus in round 14. So the graphs from this example are generated by the dump graph function that we performed at the beginning. And these are found in this directory. Graphs are dumped after each consensus block. And as you can see, this is all the graphs. So let's look at Eric005. This shows where the nodes voted. The blue blocks of votes. Red indicates an interesting event. And this is when a supermajority of votes is seen by the nodes, followed by the sequence of rounds before consensus is reached in the green blocks. Since we're looking at dynamic membership, and therefore the ability of the network to add or remove votes, if we look at this example, we can see that Eric is not a Genesis node, and as such does not gossip, initially shown by this long, empty line. Alice, Bob, Carol and Dave initially vote for the Genesis block, then start gossiping. They vote to add Eric at A12, B13, C7 and D11. Then the event Add Eric becomes what is known as an interesting event, as shown by the red blocks. And at this point, A22, B20 and C21, they begin collecting meta votes for Add Eric to decide whose votes to take into account when voting on the next block. What's important here is the fourth decision column, once this column is full. Here, finally, we get a decision from all four peers at C26 to add Eric. After this, at C28, Carol randomly decides to gossip with Eric, which allows Eric to see all events taking place up until now. He can then reach a decision about the Genesis block and add Eric's block. The consensus of the add Eric block is what allows Eric to know that he's a full member and able to gossip with other nodes as well as creating his own events. The five nodes now continue gossip. So we can see what happens also when a node gets removed. So here we start with Alice, Bob, Carol, Dave and Eric. Eric then randomly fails at some point. So after E6, he loses connection 
and stops gossiping. And the other nodes should notice this lack of gossiping and vote to have Eric removed. We can see this happening at A13, B15, C12 and D17. This becomes interesting. At this point we see the meta votes and here the decision column is full. All four remaining nodes are aware that Eric is gone and they shouldn't try to gossip with him or receive gossip from him. So hopefully this video has been useful. Just to recap, we've run through how Parsec deals with dynamic membership, or in other words, the way that a decentralized network can enable nodes to join and leave at will without it affecting the process of reaching consensus about the order in which events take place on the network. Ultimately though, any network has to reach agreement on what's happened and the order in which they happened. Dynamic membership ensures that this isn't interrupted when the gates are open to the world to join in. And it's that open, permissionless aspect of the safe network that's crucial to us in achieving our goal to build an inclusive, secure, decentralized and open platform for the world's data and communications. If you've got any questions, please give us a shout, either in the comments below or on the forum or on any of the usual social media channels. You'll find all the details below. Thanks for your time.